Okay, welcome to another episode of Intellectual Property Law. Uh, we're going to be continuing our discussion of trademark law, specifically our discussion of trademark dilution. Uh, and specifically in this class, we're going to talk about the fame requirement for uh, for a dilution action to be maintainable by a trademark owner in the first place. So as you recall, dilution is a cause of action for the use of a junior mark or an accused mark that affects consumer associations with a with an existing mark with a with a senior mark. Essentially, the concern is not that consumers will be confused, but that the allegedly diluting use of the junior mark will reduce consumer associations with the senior mark in some way. In other words, the idea is that with certain kinds of marks, there's a kind of aura of meaning around them where the mark in question sort of evokes a uh, an entire uh, product line or you know really evokes something you know really uh, intense and meaningful in consumers such that the use of the same or similar mark by another uh, by another market participant in a totally different market in a way that wouldn't confuse consumers will still enable that junior user to take advantage unfairly of the goodwill associated with the senior user of the mark. Well, what kind of marks are those that we're talking about? Famous marks, right? Marks that are so ubiquitous, that are so well known that they've taken on a huge amount of uh, kind of extra product meaning to to consumers. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the question then becomes, how do we know whether a mark is famous or not? The rule of thumb, uh, as many have observed, is if you have to ask the question in the first place, then the mark probably isn't famous, right? In other words, kind of like a note when, he, when you see it kind of uh, way of thinking about fame. When you look at the mark and you just know intrinsically that this is a mark that everybody knows and is familiar with and has associations with, good or bad, they could be bad associations as well, as long as they're really profound and intense associations where everyone can immediately identify what kind of information the, the mark in question is communicating, then that's a famous mark. But if only some people or if only a subset of people uh, have those kinds of association, then the mark isn't famous. Okay, well, what happened here? We have the University of Texas, which has registered the Texas Longhorn logo, right? And they use this for their football team. They use it in all manner of uh, other other contexts. It's been a registered mark for a long time. It's very well known, obviously, in Texas among sports fans, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, KST Enterprises, is like electronic communication company, they create what they call the Lightning Bolt Longhorn logo, which you can see a version of down there. So they use the Longhorn outline, uh, but they put their own initials over the top of it with the Lightning Bolt. <clears throat> the Texas Longhorns, University of Texas, brings an action, a trademark infringement, unfair competition, and dilution action against KST. Okay, well, KST wants them all thrown out, uh, and the court doesn't agree on that. The, the district court says, no, there's, there's, a, there's a real question of fact on trademark infringement and on, on unfair competition, right? So it's possible that the University of Texas could prevail, although you know, one questions to what extent consumers are likely to see the KST logo as indicating an endorsement by the University of Texas rather than uh, them using the logo in order to associate them with a Cheris Texas institution. Uh, however, uh, the court is not compelled by the University of Texas's uh, dilution claim. Now, why is that, right? primarily because of the question of fame, right? I mean, does the court essentially concede that if the mark is famous, then dilution might very well be taking place? I think so. The question is whether the Texas Longhorn logo is the kind of mark that's covered by the dilution statute. In other words, is it a famous mark or not? Right? Well, Texas is kind of offended that the question would be asked in the first place, right? They're like, you know, we spent a lot of money invested in promoting this mark, right? We use it all over the place. People license it from us. We're a very popular football team. That's crazy. Of course, it's famous. KTS responds how? With 
surveys, right? So how do you prove fame? You go out and test it and see how people react to the mark. So Texas goes out and it gets surveys saying that, you know, surveys people all throughout Texas and the Austin area and everyone in Texas knows what the Longhorn logo is, right? They all associate it with the University of Texas. But what does KTS do? Their response from their expert is, this isn't a Texas-based, this can't be a Texas-based survey. It has to be a national survey, right? So under the dilution statute, right, the consuming public as the United States has to widely recognize the mark as the source, right? So they send their expert out to do nationwide surveys and their expert finds a really relatively low level of association between the Texas Longhorn mark and the University of Texas on a nationwide basis. Now, Texas responds by saying, hey, the survey results here are rigged. Right? You asked the question in such a way that encouraged people to give responses that you then coded as not being association with Texas when in fact they were. Right. So apparently this, the, uh, the, the cert person running the survey for KST asked people, do you associate this with any, you know, business or place? If they said Texas, well, then he coded it as not being associated with the University of Texas because they didn't specifically say University of Texas. And if they gave additional re alternative responses that you could infer were an intent to or an, an, an effort to refer to the University of Texas. If they didn't explicitly say University of Texas football, then it was coded as a, a non-responsive answer. And the judge wasn't having it. The judge was pretty uh, dismissive of, of, their, of their expert and essentially suggested that that expert better wise up and not try to engage in those kind of games in the future. But the fact that KTS's expert was uncompelling wasn't enough because the burden is on Texas to prove that the mark is famous. And Texas came back with survey results only showing fame in Texas, right? The court essentially said, look, what you've proven is that the Texas Longhorn mark is famous in Texas and is famous among people who follow college sports. Now that might be a lot of people, right? These are popular, Texas is a big state, but that's not the kind of fame you need to show right? You have to show nationwide fame among the overwhelming majority of people. That's not what you showed. What you showed is niche fame. Now it's a big niche, right? College sports fans, but it's not big enough for trademark dilution, right? So what kind of marks might come? Oh, you know, of course, in the background here is that a lot of people throughout Texas are using the Longhorn logo, maybe slightly different Longhorn logos, right? So the question is, you know, how broad should the University of Texas's claim over the image of a Longhorn cow uh, ultimately be, right? Shouldn't other uh, Texas-based organizations also be able to use a Longhorn? After all, why did Texas University of Texas choose the Longhorn in the first place? Well, it's because the Longhorn is associated with Texas the state, not just with Texas the university. Do we really want to see them being able to use this against you know any use of the Longhorn logo in any context? It seems like we might be a little concerned about that. In any case, uh, KST ultimately uh, changed its logo anyway, so it looks dramatically different, although still evoking the Texas Longhorn image. Uh, so what kind of marks have been found by courts to be famous? Here you see a list. These were all found to be famous marks. I can imagine you have, well, at least in most cases, a uh, pretty clear idea what uh, kind of product or service they're referring to. Uh, by contrast, here are some examples of marks that courts found not to be sufficiently famous for the purpose of a dilution action. And we'll look at some other examples in our class discussion.